I think this is very promising. This is exciting the way it is able to focus in low light. Hi guys, what's up? Today we're going to talk about how to get the best low light autofocus performance out of the Z6 II and what all you need to do to get that performance. The first of all, the first thing that you do is set a couple of settings right. So what you do is you go to the pencil icon, the custom settings menu and within that go to A or autofocus and go to A10 where you have the low light autofocus or low light A on or off option. Uh, press right on the dial pad and then choose on. What it's going to do is in low light circumstances going to sort of give more power to the autofocus uh, engine systems inside and ensure that it is more accurate um, during in those circumstances. But mind you, when you are not in low light, just remember to switch it off because uh, when the low light AF is on, it tends to get slower in normal circumstances. In terms of autofocus, the speed tends to sort of lower in, in, in normal circum lighting conditions. So the other thing that you'll do is remain within the pencil icon, the custom setting menu and go to, go to shooting and display. Okay, and then go to D5 or shutter type. There you have auto, you have mechanical shutter and you have electronic front curtain shutter you switch that on now you'll see um, the electronic front curtain shutter and the normal shutter they sound different i'll explain to you why they sound different uh, so this is the normal uh, this is how the normal mechanical shutter sounds listen to this nice and quiet and smooth but if you notice it, it sounds like there are uh, sort of Two actuations so or like two movements happening crack, crack. it sounds like there are two movements happening now i'm moving now right now to electronic front curtain shutter and hear this you see it sounds like a single element moving compared to the normal mechanical shutter one more time that's because um the shutter is basically made up of two curtains and one curtain falls from from the top and then there is another curtain that sort of follows it maintaining a certain amount of gap it kind of follows it like this and depending on your shutter speed it, it the the gap between the two sh uh, sort of curtains is um, dependent on your shutter speed so when both of them drop there is more shake there is more vibration so you're likely to get a little bit of shutter shakes that looks like a motion blur and uh, it's a tiny bit of blur and you want to when you want to zoom in and see with the eyes just right and in focus so that the sharp linear lines are in focus or not you'll see some of them are sort of out of focus if you have the mechanical shutter shake uh, so the great way to avoid that without getting into banding and stuff that you get from electronic shutter silent shutter is to use the electronic front curtain shutter now so when you have these two things on you have two things taken care of the camera is sort of geared to perform better in low light because you have put the low light af on and secondly um, you have taken care of the shutter shake to a certain extent and now all you have to do is stand steady as steady as you can uh, switch on the of course switch on the vr you can also switch on the vr sport uh, which is one option there you can switch on the vr normal or you can also uh, switch on the vr sport but that's mostly for uh, situations when you have a lot of movement but you know for normal hand vibrations you, the normal iris is fine but remember to switch that on as well so you now have a sort of a steady hand you just hold it right there's not much of shutter shake going on in the camera so you're sort of set to go now um let's look at the different modes and let's let's evaluate the different modes uh different autofocus modes so what do you have you have you have the afc which is autofocus continuous which means that whenever you might have back and forth and sideways movement but most importantly back and forth movement and the subject might have back and forth movement what afc does is it continuously uh, tracks the position of the subject um, and doesn't let the subject go so it doesn't matter if you are sort of moving back and forth a little bit when the afc is on the camera is tracking every movement and also keeping in mind <clears throat> and also keeping in mind that you are moving a little bit um and and so afc does that for you the other option that you have is to use af 
s which is autofocus single in the call terms what autofocus single does is it sort of it uh, captures focus and it stays on that point so let's say you're shooting me and i'm here you you focus on my eye and you press the focus button and leave the focus button after you get a confirmation of focus what it is going to do is that it's going to my eye is here it's going to focus here and then it's not going to track me so if i move back a little bit if i pull my head back a little bit remember i'm out of the focus plane a little bit i'm behind the focus plane or if i move forward i'm in front of the focus plane so what happens in afs is that it um focuses once to a single point of focus and kind of fixes the focus there whether you're shooting quickly and you have a static object or a static subject afs is perfect typically focuses faster on every camera system and it's uh, kind of more accurate but the problem is if you move if someone moves then you have a problem you're out of the fo focal plane now the, the third option is obviously to use the manual focus and will not go there because you're trying to use a very uh, modern day high grade mirrorless camera and trying to use the best uh, of this engine that you have inside it and use out of focus right now let's look at some footage in the afc mode and the auto area mode where you have the entire sort of area in focus and it's going to look for uh, whatever it, it the camera thinks is important uh, and it's going to focus there so as you can see in this particular instance it's it's sort of focusing on the door in front of it uh it, it thinks that the door some point on the door wooden door is is right in front of it and it thinks it is important so it is focusing there So this mode is fine but the problem with this mode is that you are not being able to select anything so if you want to sort of change the position of the focus point to something else uh, you have to sort of move the camera around and see hope for the camera to focus on where you want it to focus on uh, much better is to have some some sort of control so what you will do right now is we'll quickly move for the tracker you put the tracker on the ok button on or you can assign the tracker to the fn1 or fn2 buttons which is right here in front of the camera and and what you do with this uh, tracker is that you you put you, you you put the tracker on the box on a certain subject and see how it performs and as you can see with afc it performs well it performs well till minus 1.5 ev It's all right it's performing fine the good thing about the tracker is that if you move a little bit uh, you know backward and forward uh, it missed it for a second the good thing about tracker is that if you move backward and forward it, the expectation is that it's going to sort of keep tracking like I said uh, the subject is supposed to be tracked by the camera in the AFC mode and the tracker box does uh, a better job of doing that because it, the box this tracker box is dynamic now the next option is a wide L box it gives you sort of a wide area to focus on now as you can see it's trying to focus the problem with therefore with this um, box is that it's it's wide and if you want to focus on a smaller subject um, then you have to choose a smaller box which leads us to the next mode which is a slightly smaller square and this square box is also nice uh, the midpoint um, in the square box that you see is the main uh, focus point for within this box so it, it's sort of trying to find something to focus on but it prioritizes that tiny point you know uh, most of the box is on the bulb but a little bit of the tiny bit of the box on the right side is on the on the door but it's sort of focusing on the door so, so in all the AFC modes you see that the camera focuses well uh, within minus 1.5 to minus 2 EV for the Z6 II but beyond that it starts becoming unreliable but you see this scene particularly the scene that you have set up we have set up a sort of a dark scene because you're trying to 
figure out how it focuses in, in low light circumstances, right? Please remember that we're trying to we're trying to uh, test the camera in a sort of challenging situation, not in a very favorable condition, in a challenging situation where the camera will sort of have to deal with uh, a lot of low light minus 2, 3 EV. I'm also going to manipulate the shutter speed, the ISO and everything so that it doesn't get a lot of exposure, so that it doesn't get a lot of light. Um, but the point is you give it a difficult sort of scene to analyze and uh, things to focus on that things that are low contrast as well as you can see in most of the scenes that you will see here is that we have uh, dark objects against the against darkness so you have a wall you have a white wall sort of whitish wall but that that wall is is also there it's not well lit on the other hand you have the camera on a tripod and the tripod legs are glistening uh, and and as you can see the boxes will find it much easier to focus on the tripod legs because there is a bit of contrast there there's a light and shadow also uh, the fuji camera it's somewhat being able to sort of read the writing the of the logo and the other things the buttons and the lens um, that's reflecting some light it's being able to recognize that and focus well there now the next mode is is this i don't know what to call it you have these dots and then you have a small box it sort of again defines a a, a, a square sort of area within which to focus but the priority goes to a small box inside that and within the box the, the small tiny point now this does typically well in uh, these kind of conditions but as you are seeing um it's reliable up to 1.5 minus 1.5 ev to minus 2 ev and that's about it and it's uh, uh, but you're getting autofocus continuous and uh, if you're shooting even till um minus 1 1.5 ev it's great really it's really good and uh, we should we should try to be careful about our exposure of course and not the cameras do very well in iso right so there's no need if you can if you need to go down to 12000 uh, iso please do so because these cameras the z bodies do fantastic in high isos uh, and it retains the colors it retains the the noise is not too much compared to the other bodies so you can go uh, up to that sort of iso but try and ensure that you're within minus one to minus one and a half EV and your camera will perform well, pretty well without much frustration and you will be able to use AFC. But if we are in a condition where um, you have to sort of, you can't increase the exposure of the camera, think of using AFS, especially in low light circumstances, think of using AFS what you will do is quickly move to AFS um, by using this camera and here you have a few options but here also you can use the tracker now the interesting thing about the tracker here as you can see is that the tracker is designed to sort of remember the pattern of the object where you focus on so even in AFS although it's not going to um, although it's not going to track the object uh, track continuously the position of the object, the changing position of the object, but it, what it is going to do is remember how that object looked. So what you can do in AFS as well is you put the track there and recompose the shot and the box will remember where to go and you go back to the point where you had last focused. And then you can press the focus button again and focus. And what is great in this is that in AFS, a autofocus single, everything works very, very well. Now look at this. This is immediately giving a focus confirmation in the tracking mode. Now let's look at other options. You have the pinpoint mode opened up here. And in pinpoint, as you can see, how quickly it focuses. It's quick, it's quick, it's very quick. And it quickly focuses and grabs onto subjects. The same with the larger, slightly like larger box, the same with the square, the sort of medium sized square and the same with the 
larger rectangle but the larger rectangle is obviously you can't it's sort of a large idea to focus on so if you have something very specific to focus on you can move to the medium sized square or the small sized square box or the pinpoint focus and this does so well i i went down to minus four minus five EV. in fact trust me i went into minus five EV and the camera can see and focus So now let me give a summary first for low light focus nothing beats afs but the afs focus works very well because the z6 in fact the z6 also used a certain kind of technology what it does is is boosts the iso up to be able to see that's why you saw in certain situations the screen brighten up and you get focus confirmation because it artificially increases iso so that the sensor can see what you're trying to focus on it locks the focus gives you confirmation and then you're good to go so the great thing the technology the mirrorless technology and the z6 employs that is that it artificially increases the exposure and ensures that the camera can see but the problem is this technique this technology in the z bodies are only used in the afs mode and not the afc mode for my Fuji, this, they use the same technology for the AFC mode as well and it works really, really well. I'm looking for an update where uh, this implementation is go for uh, come for the AFC mode in the Z bodies as well. And I don't see a reason why that update cannot go to the Z6 as well or the Z5 as well. Now, there is a difference, however, the Z6 uses the same technology, but the ability for the Z6 to focus even in AFS uh, with that boost of exposure is less than the z6 2 the z6 2 definitely does better it can very easily focus down to minus 6 ev although nikon claims minus four and a half it i saw that it can focus down to minus 6 ev in single if a single with any focus point you take even if you take, choose a pinpoint focus that is fantastic news so especially if you're going out in the night look at this picture i love you taking these kind of pictures I love taking shots in, in in the night and mostly I'm not uh, capturing moving objects. I'm sort of uh, looking at the moon using the lights, you know. So what it does for me is that it opens up a lot of creative opportunities to shoot uh, to shoot in the darkness and, and to use the little bit of light that I see during night to for creative effect. And that is exciting for me. And that is exactly why I actually bought this camera. And that is why I've been doing a lot of low light tests with the Z6 II. Now, the other thing uh, to remember is that, like I said, um, AFC does not give you as good low light performance, but you can go up to minus one and a half EV to minus 1.2 EV as well. Tracking can be used intelligently in both AFC and AFS. Uh, remember, to switch on the AF, um, low light AF, uh, and also remember to sort of go on um, mechanical front, electronic front curtain shutter and move out of um, mechanical shutter. So guys, that's it. This is exciting. This is, this is, this augurs very well for Nikon. I'm looking forward to firmware updates to do this, uh, make these small fixes. I think this is very promising this is exciting the way it is able to focus in low light and um i would have loved to see this performance in afc but hey what i'm getting right now is not bad at all i mean i am very happy it's wrong to say it's not bad at all this is great this is really really good okay and um so yeah go buy your z6 too it's a great camera it's fantastic We'll come up with a color taste and skin color taste and uh, we'll see how the picture quality differs between the z6 and the z6 II. Um, share what you think write in the comments below what you think of this review and if you think you like coming back to our channel please subscribe please like this content we are a new channel we would it takes nothing for you to subscribe guys and but it's going to 
it could really motivate motivate us if you subscribe and if you put a comment down there that if you talk to us engage with us right so thanks a lot thanks a lot see you again bye